Uh, my name is Elizabeth Rodeo. I am a senior at MCLA studying theater, music, and history. And this is my URC presentation for spring 2021 of the evolution of women's undergarments. So fully boned bodices that lace up have been worn for centuries. Uh, and the term stays applies to those worn between the late 1500s and the late 1700s. Um, stays comes from the French word STA, meaning to support, uh, which is exactly what they did. So women from all social classes wore stays, although the, although the stays worn by wealthier individuals were often much more restrictive and were laced tighter than those worn by middle and lower class women. They had what was called working stays for women who were doing all of their own labor and they often did not have straps and were less tight fitting uh, so that women would have a wider range of motion. If a, uh, women went for too long without wearing stays, people would assume that she was pregnant or just lazy, which was not a great thing to be labeled in that time. And so stays quite literally symbolized the uprightness and virtue of the women wearing them in society. So I have made for you uh, this set of stays modeled after a pattern from the 1780s. Uh, they are not particularly tight laced. They could be uh, if I wanted to. They have straps. They also have these tabs on the sides that go out. Um, and these would help to support the layers of petticoats that would be that would go on top of this. Um, and that would create the large rounded skirt silhouette. So moving on to corsets. So the first term corset was first used in the 1770s to describe undergarments that were similar to stays but didn't have any boning. Uh, it comes from the French word corps, meaning body. Uh, and short stays like the ones on the left here um, remained in fashion as well throughout the early 1800s. And then following the 1810s, boning began to return to undergarments and we arrive at what we today would think of as being a, a corset. Uh, the 1830s when these two corsets were made was when steel began to replace baleen uh, as the support structure in corsets. And corsets also began to be sewn using machines, making them much faster to produce and also much cheaper to buy. The average corset cost about a dollar. And machine sewn corsets remained popular through the end of the 1800s. So the Victorian era in the middle of the 1800s is when tight lacing became popular and the desirable waist size for women was between 17 and 22 inches, which is about about that big round, <laughs> it's a little crazy to think about. So the S-bend corset, uh, so named for the curve that it gave to the women's bodies, uh, was only in fashion for a little bit at the beginning of the 1900s. Uh, the body of the corset extended down past the hips and there was a rigid busk inserted down the front that would force the women's hips backwards. Uh, World War I then began in 1914 and corsets um, fell out of fashion as women entered the workforce and women were also encouraged to stop buying corsets in order to conserve steel uh, to create war munitions. Um, fun fact, <laughs> the amount of steel that was saved by stopping corset production actually was able to build two entire battleships. <laughs> so I will show you this half scale corset that I have made. Um, you see it has a busk up the front and it laces in the back. Um, to get this on, it would generally be loosely laced up the back and women would put it on and close the busk. And then the back would be laced up tightly to fit her. Um, this is just kind of a very standard shaped corset. The pattern that I used is based on one from the 1880s. And then we have a brief step back in time, about 60 years, to touch on the crinoline. Um, so before the crinoline became popular, women were wearing layers upon layers upon layers of petticoats, which was very, very heavy. 
Um, and so in the early 1800s, someone decided that they were going to start making what we now call a crinoline out of horsehair fabric, which is this one on the left, um, which was very stiff, um, but created the same silhouette as many layers of petticoats, but it was much, much lighter. And then in 1856, the cage crinoline was first patented and it was made of steel hoops that could reach over six feet in diameter. And this unfortunately proved hazardous to many women um, as they were prone to catching on fire as they walked past open flames. Um, these eventually fell out of fashion as women began working more and the large hoops would get in the way. There was a very brief resurgence in popularity in the 1930s after the movie Gone with the Wind came out and the Queen Mother, Elizabeth of England, uh, wore crinolines to um, events and formal, uh, formal events of, of state and such. So I'm going to show you now as I put this crinoline on my little mannequin. So it, it laces up the front, as you can see, uh, these would be tightened. And then, then tied at the top. And this would, this uh, kind of waistband almost at the top would be what kept the crinoline on the women wearing it. It also gave it some support on uh, some, a way to rest on her hips. And this would tie in the front. Laces up very much like a corset, like a pair of stays. They all lace up the same. And so then you'd have the hoops and at the bottom, what is called the bag. The last three hoops are here and the bag is there so that women would not just step right through the openings in between the hoops when they were trying to walk. But this would give the big rounded silhouette structure um, that they were going for without um, being very, very heavy and weighing many, many pounds. And then finally, we have arrived at the modern bra. So this was patented in 1914 by a woman named Mary Phelps Jacob. It was originally two handkerchiefs sewn together down the middle with ribbons to tie it around the body. Um, and the introduction and popularity of the modern bra changed the way the undergarments work for women. Uh, corsets and stays were built to secure and push breasts up from below while the modern bra is made to pull up and support from above. Uh, and this new way of doing this changed fashion completely throughout the 20th century. Fashion changed every decade, sometimes more than once a decade. Um, but fundamentally, uh, the bra has remained the same for the past roughly 100 years. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.